is there also. We've got Panama Jack right near picture, Colossal Isle Marina, Hooters, Arrow Express. Looks like we're going to have a very clean start. Boats on plane, everyone is looking good. And we've got the green flag. And right there in your picture, we've got the executioner on the inside and Reggie Fountain on the outside going head to head. Fountain and the executioner, a clean start, and everyone's really starting to pick it up right now. As you see, the seas are relatively calm, and we expect some great racing. Here we are right now with Reggie Fountain as he takes the lead. This is boat number 76, the Fountain Racing Team. It's a 47-foot Fountain Racing hull powered by three 1,000-horsepower Mercury inboard motors with key key for outdrives. This boat is owned and driven by Reggie Fountain Jr. from Washington, North Carolina, and on throttles, coming all the way from Kuwait, we've got Basel Al Saba teaming up with Reggie Fountain. So Basel and Fountain are forming a very formidable team right here in this Fountain Racing Hall. And right now you see them in a position where Reggie has been for so many years, in the lead, first overall right now, and he is certainly going to be a tough one to catch if this boat runs the way it is right now. He's a strong competitor, and this boat is dialed in quite nicely, and they're looking very strong. The union of Reggie Fountain and Basil has certainly been an interesting one. Basil is the chairman of COPA, the Kuwait Offshore Powerboat Association, which is the Kuwaiti equivalent to the APBA. He also feels very strongly that the entire Kuwait organization is looking forward to a future of racing extensively in the United States and forming a bond of friendship as well as competition with the race teams here in the APBA. Basel would like to promote the sport on all levels and also strengthen the bond between Kuwait and the U.S. by forming joint venture teams sponsoring races. Basel feels very strongly about the Americans and the Allied forces and everything that they've done in helping to liberate Kuwait and he feels he would like to continue to promote the friendship and competitive spirit between his nation of Kuwait and the United States of America. And what better way to do that than on the open waters with high performance offshore powerboat racing. A little earlier on, Mike Tomlinson had a chance to get some thoughts of Basel and his overall impressions of offshore powerboat racing here in the United States of America. We're here at the 1991 Sarasota Offshore Grand Prix with uh, Basil, who is a member of the Fountain and Copa Racing Team. And Basil, we're honored to have you back in the United States again. It's been some time since you've been here. Uh, tell us, did you think that uh, you'd have a chance to get back over here this soon? Well, uh, about a year and a half ago, I would have seen it as being virtually impossible. But uh, thanks to the Allied Forces, President Bush and the Americans and all the uh, Allied Forces that helped us liberate and free Kuwait, it was for a worthy cause, it was for a good cause, and I'm pretty sure the American people realize that, that like Je uh, President Bush said, aggression won't stand. Um, as for the racing, COPA will not, uh, will not stop operating. We will have to go back to racing, I would say, within the next year and a half, simply because of the waters. There's a lot of mines still loose in the waters. Uh, it'll take some time to get them cleared up, but as soon as they're cleared up, you better believe we'll have races again. You're all invited to come down there and have a good time. Basil, that's wonderful. We're, we're really proud to have you back here in the United States and running with the Fountain team. Uh, it's a wonderful, we think, uh, uh, marriage of a Copa and Fountain, and uh, we know that uh, we're looking forward to great things out of you tomorrow. Well, it was a great invitation, and I'm honored and uh, privileged to be invited by Reggie uh, to come throttle with him in his boat. Uh, the mastermind behind this, I would have to say, is probably John Antonelli. He's a good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, and he uh, was there at the last Kuwait race that we had, which was such a great success. It's what had the, the whole people talking about coming to Kuwait and the Middle East futuristically for racing. And uh, when Reggie proposed to me that uh, offer, hey, I want you to come throttle for me, I, I took the chance and came. And I tell you, it's a nice boat. We look at competition tomorrow, but cross your fingers. Everything stays up together right. I'll push them through to the winner's flag. I'll get it. That's great, Basil. And uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you in the winner's circle tomorrow. All right, you got it. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Basil.
As you can see, this boat is dialed in exceptionally well. Reggie and Basil really have it down right now. Just listen to those 3,000 horsepower combined motors doing the job that it takes to win a race here today. And right now, they look like they're going to be tough to catch. They're in first place in class, as well as first place overall. And Reggie and Basil seem to have a very strong boat right now, and they're going to be tough to catch. So with that, we wish Basil and Reggie a good race here today, as well as throughout the 1991 racing campaign. Now we come up on Alan Fuente's Executioner Race Team. This is boat number 85. This is a 40-foot fountain racing hull powered by two 1,100 horsepower Dennis Performance inboard motors with Mercruiser outdrive. This boat is owned and throttled by Alan Fuentes of Virginia Beach, Florida. Driving today, we've got Mark Hawkins from Virginia Beach, Florida, and Jack Haney from Virginia Beach, Florida is your navigator. The Executioner Race Team, another strong running boat here today. Just listen to the power being put out by this race boat, and Alan's doing a fantastic job on the throttles. Following an extremely successful 1990 rookie year, they decided to enter professional racing. The Executioner took several individual wins, as well as winning the four race Gold Cup Championship Series. Later that year, the racing team jumped to the newly formed Manufacturer Super V-Class and proceeded to take third place nationally in Key West, Florida, with Alan Quaints being named the 1990 OPBRA Rookie of the Year. Before the beginning of the 1991 season, Alan took the boat to the Fountain Plant in Washington, North Carolina, where it was refitted with twin 1,000 horsepower supercharged engines, as well as new high-performance outdrives. The combination produced an offshore racing boat capable of crossing the finish line at speeds greater than 110 miles per hour. With four more regular season races left to go, the team will move on to the national championship in November and will have the option of attending the world championships in Italy in December. So right here you see the executioner race team headed up by Alan Fuentes and they're doing an excellent job and they're certainly going to be one of the top boats throughout the 91 campaign. Alan Fuentes, executioner race team. Presently at this point in the race, the Executioner is running in second place behind Reggie Fountain's Fountain Racing Team, and they are first place old in class right now. And if it continues this way, they're going to be very difficult to catch in the Manufacturer's Super V. The Executioner Race Team enjoying an excellent run so far. Now we come up on D57, Arrow Express. This is a 31-foot custom-made racing hull powered by two 700-horsepower Mercury inboard motors with Merc Cruiser outdrives. This 31-foot custom-built race boat is owned and throttled by Phil DeGena of Bayville, New York. 
Driving Aero Express for the first time in competition is John Buschema of Port Ritchie, Florida. And navigating today is Mike Camerera, also of Port Ritchie, Florida. The Aero Express race team is sponsored by Aero Snow Removal Corporation, DeGena Industries Incorporated, and Dynalube. Aero Snow Removal Corporation is a leader in and specializes in airport snow removal services in the New York Tri-State area. DeGena Industries specializes in municipal street sweeping services throughout the Northeast. And Dynalube is a Teflon-based product specifically formulated to reduce friction on any motor application. Aero Express is powered by twin 700 horsepower Motor City engines with Mercruiser drives. The driver of record is Paul Horsky of Port Washington, New York, and the navigator is norm normally Arthur Lampus, also of Port Washington, New York. But Boscema and Camara are doing an excellent job of keeping Aero Express rocketing along the Gulf of Mexico today. Phil DeGeno wishes to thank Guy LaMotta of Manhasset Bay Marina for donating the use of his entire shop facility and Tony LaCaro of Tom Points Marina, also of Port Washington, for supplying the final touches for preparing Aero Express for the Buffalo, New York race in which Aero Express finished first in class and first overall. Phil also wishes to thank Mike Camara of Mars Performance Center of Port Ritchie, Florida for the excellent rigging and balancing job he did on the Aero Express race boat. In three races entered this year, Aero Express finished all three races, taking a third in Panama City, second in Newburyport, and first in Buffalo, New York, giving an indication of the design and rigging ability of Mars Performance Center of Port Ritchie. Phil and his entire crew wishes to thank Linda DeGena for the enthusiasm and supportive role she plays on the Aero Express team. She was voted the MVP, Most Valuable Person. As you can see, there is a lot of good sponsors and people supporting this very successful race team, D57. Aero Express rocketing along at 110 miles per hour when it's cranked up, taking it to the limit one more time. And presently, Aero Express is running in third place overall right now. So you've got Fountain in first, the Executioner in second, and Aero Express in third place. What a great start we've got here today in the Suncoast Offshore Grand Prix, and we wish Aero Express all the best in its quest for a checkered flag today and throughout the 1991 campaign. Phil DeGena's Aero Express race team. Not only are they third overall, but Phil's got his boat first in class right now, so we're really looking for some good things from Arrow Express. That's Arrow Express pulling up on Heat Wave. Got a D boat and a P boat right now. Heat Wave in Pro Stock, Arrow Express Offshore D. And you see Arrow Express, Phil DeGena pulling them on the outside. Arrow Express dialed in quite nicely. This boat is looking very comfortable in the racing waters right now. Maximum efficiency out of those throttles right now. Those engines are humming right now.
As we leave the leader in D-Class, we now join P7, Heat Wave. This is a 32-foot skater powered by three 260-horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned and throttled by Ron Vardenor of Jacksonville, Florida. Driving today, we've got Mike Hollowell from Jacksonville, Florida, and Mike's also doing the navigation. Heat wave, and right now they are presently on a heat wave. They're setting a blistering pace around this course right now. They're presently in first place in class. They're going to be dueling with doubles pizza and bad move throughout the course of the day. Heat wave and doubles will be locked in a battle, I'm sure, throughout most of the race. Right now, they are in first place in their class. So we've got some great racing in all classes. Reggie Fountain in first place in his boat. The Executioner is in first place there. Arrow Express first place in the Offshore D. And this is your first place in Pro Stock. Heat wave. Ron Vardner is really doing the job. And there you see Mike Hollowell navigating the boat. And they're doing an excellent job, as you can see right now. From Sarasota, Florida, it's P7, the Heat Wave Race Team. These Mercury outboards are really doing the job. They sound fine right now, and this boat looks like it's off for a great day of racing here today. Now we come up on competition in the Pro Stock, P19, doubles pizza race team. This is a 32-foot Black Conquest powered by three 280 horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned by Robert Baker of Marysville, Michigan. Driving today, we've got Tim Baker from Port Huron, Michigan, and on throttles, it's James Baker from Port Huron, Michigan. The Bakers making up the Doubles Pizza race team. This boat is sponsored by Doubles Pizza, Zebra Bar, Tiger Fiberglass, Hammers Welding, Ron's Truck Stop, 76 Auto Truck Stop, Peter Ells of Port Huron, Michigan, and Dave Schneider's Mac Tools. So a lot of people have come together to make this Doubles Pizza a successful racing team. This is Doubles Pizza, sixth year on the racing circuit. And they're locked in a battle with Heat Wave, who we just saw. So this is going to be an exciting race in Pro Stock between Heat Wave, Doubles Pizza, and Bad Move is also in the Pro Stock category today. Good looking boat, that black hull with the pink deck. Looks very good right now, the boat sounds good. It's got ideal water conditions for this catamaran racing hull. And we certainly wish the Bakers all the best here today in Sarasota, Florida in Devil's Pizza Race Team. Then you picture right there at the head of Devil's Pizza, 
That is D26, Panama Jack, 37-foot Talon with three 265-horsepower Mercury outboards. This boat is throttled by Terry Hill of Fort Myers, Florida, and Joe Sorrentino of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is your driver. Sorrentino and Hill making up the Panama Jack race team on the far outside of Doubles Pizza. Different classes of boats, though. Panama Jack is an offshore D boat, while Doubles Pizza is in the pro stock category. But when you have side-by-side -side racing, always gives you a good frame of reference and makes for some very exciting viewing. So that's Panama Jack on the outside, Devil's Pizza on the inside. We certainly wish the Bakers all the best in the Devil's Pizza race team. Panama Jack and Doubles Pizza still having a good duel. And now we're going to get some real exciting racing in the Pro Stock Division. Right there is Heat Wave and Doubles Pizza is definitely gaining on Heat Wave. The outside is Panama Jack, but really of no concern to these two drivers, because what Doubles Pizza has its sights set on is Heat Wave. There you see Doubles Pizza in the middle, Heat Wave on the outside, and on the inside, it's Panama Jack. Now we come up on boat number nine, Hydra Bandit. There's a 36-foot Hydratech racing hull powered by two 650-horsepower Bandit inboard racing motors with Mercruiser outdrives. This boat is owned and driven by Vince Guarino of Staten Island, New York, and Joe Calabro from Livingston, New Jersey, is on the throttles. This boat is sponsored by Tresh Construction, Benzel Bush, Motorola. Hydra Bandit is the 1990 Northeast High Points Champion and the North American Champion. So they've had a great 90 campaign and they'd really like to come out here and continue their success for 1991. They would like to extend, extend a very special thanks to Warren and Tony from Trace Construction for funding the 1991 racing season for the Hydra Bandit race team. The head mechanic for Hydra Bandit is Steve Thomas and his crew members are Sam Cesario and Kurt Berger all joining to form a great racing team known as the Hydra Bandit Race Team. And Hydra Bandit certainly has its competition cut out for it today because Reggie Fountain is on fire and he's looking very strong. But Hydra Bandit, a strong competitor, knows what his boat is capable of. He'll certainly give Reggie a run for his money here today in Sarasota. Boat number nine, the Hydra Bandit Race Team.
Those Bandit racing motors really doing the job for Hydra Bandit. Now we come up on C98, full throttle. This is a 25-foot motion powered by two 250-horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned and driven by Oliver Barsh of Jacksonville, Florida, and Alani Gilmore from Jacksonville is on throttle. It's Gilmore and Barsh making up the full throttle race team, and right now this boat is being run under a full throttle condition. It is moving. It is setting a blistering pace, so much so, in fact, that it is unofficially in first place in C-Class, locked in a fierce battle with Enterprise, Blackjack, and Little Scarab, as well as Hostile Takeover. They've got some great racing going right now, and Full Throttle is unofficially in the lead and looking very good. However, there's quite a bit of parity and several boats entered in the offshore sea. So this one's going to go right down to the wire here today in Sarasota, Florida. Oliver Barsh, C-98, Full Throttle Race Team. Listen to those Mercury outboards whine out with the RPMs. This boat is dialed in very well, and it has the type of racing conditions that it likes. Very calm, not much chop, and this boat is propelled extremely well right now here off the coast of Sarasota. We wish them all the best here today. C-98, the full throttle race team. Full Throttle is setting a blistering pace around this race course. And there you see them coming up on the Heat Wave race team. Heat Wave presently is running in second place in Pro Stock. We saw earlier on they were passed by Doubles Pizza in some very exciting racing. Doubles Pizza is still in first place in Pro Stock, Heat Wave in second. To give you an idea of just how fast Full Throttle is traveling, they're coming up and they are challenging the larger Pro Stock boat right here. So on the inside, it's Oliver Barsh in Full Throttle doing a great job here today, and this boat looks like it's going to be tough to catch in the C-Class here today. And there he goes by Heat Wave, and he is starting to really move out in C-Class. We're gonna have a great race in, with all the C-Boats between Full Throttle and Hostile Takeover, who is also running very strong. And speaking of Hostile Takeover, here they are, C-82. This also is a 25-foot motion powered by two 275-horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned and throttled by Peter Shaw of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Ed Thornton from Fort Lauderdale is your driver here today. So Sean Thornton making up the hostile takeover race team. And right now they are trying to take over the lead in any way that they can, and they're doing an outstanding job in keeping it close between themselves and full throttle. We're going to have a race right down to the wire 
in offshore sea here today. And they're really starting to push it to the limit. You can see they're running a little loose right here, coming out of the water a little more than some of the other boats who seem to be more comfortable in the water. They're really pushing this boat to its limits, so much so a little on the loose side, but hopefully they will get that dialed in and really start closing the gap between themselves and the leader, full throttle. From Sarasota, Florida, it's Pete Shaw and Ed Thornton in hostile takeover, running extremely aggressively right now. Now we come up on S7, the Patriot Race Team. This is a 24-foot skater racing hull powered by two 200-horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned and driven by Robert Hamlin of Davidson, North Carolina, and on throttles, it's Tad Kimes from Key West, Florida. Tad Kimes, the throttle man from Sunfire Race Team, and he's come out and joined forces with Hamlin, forming the Patriot Race Team, and this boat is looking quite good right now. Patriot, they're in a duel with Sundance Skater, Thin Ice, Liliana, Courageous Cat, they're all there. Fortune and Glory Violator, but Patriot has a slight lead over the rest of the field right now, and they're looking extremely strong. This boat is sponsored by Environmental S Source Samples Incorporated and Horsepower Unlimited Marine Service. They're currently in first place in points with a 70-point lead over the rest of the competition. This boat holds the world kilo record of 102.452 miles per hour set in Sarasota. They also hold the average course record of 91.7 miles per hour set at Traverse City, Michigan in 1989. The engines are built and maintained by Horsepower and Limited Marine Service located in Stanley, North Carolina. The driver is president of Environmental Service Samples Incorporated who is your majority sponsor and he's doing a great job. Robert Hamlin doing an outstanding job driving the Patriot race boat here today. And Tad Kimes is currently your stock class national champion throttle man. So Kimes has really come out here and helped Robert Hamlin in making Patriot a strong running boat, as you can see at the present point in time. From Sarasota, Florida, it's Robert Hamlin's S7 Patriot race team. We've got a duel going here between Thin Ice and ST Enterprise. Enterprise a little behind Thin Ice right now, and this is a good battle going on. Enterprise is an offshore sea boat, while Thin Ice is in your stock class. Thin Ice is dueling with Patriot and Sundance Skater. But right here, we've got a battle with Enterprise and Thin Ice. Enterprise on the inside, Thin Ice on the outside. Good bit of footage right there. Let's stay with S12, the Thin Ice Race Team. 
This is a 24-foot skater powered by two 200 horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned and throttled by Steve Skorupski of Fort Myers, Florida, and Lisa Grieger from Orlando, Florida is driving today. So Grieger and Skorupski making up the thin ice race team. And they're running very well right now. The Stock Class extremely competitive with Thin Ice, Sundance Skater, Patriot, Liliana, Courageous Cat, Violator, Fortune and Glory, all strong running boats so evenly matched. And it's going to go right down to the wire here also in the Stock Class, we're sure. There you get a good close-up look of what this boat is all about. S12, the Thin Ice race team having a fine run here today in Sarasota, Florida. Already this year, Thin Ice took a fourth place finish at the St. Cloud race. And they certainly hope to improve upon that today here in Sarasota. Now we come up on the battle in offshore B-Class. Lady L on the inside and Network Express on the outside right here. This is the battle for first place in offshore B. And what a race we've got going right here. B-50, Network Express, Art Lilly on the outside, and Peter Myers, Lady L on the inside. There you see Network Express, that 33-foot fountain racing hull, looking very good right now. It's B-50. This 33 fountain racing hull is powered by two 540-horsepower Mercury inboard motors with Merc Cruiser outdrives. This boat is owned and throttled by Art Lilly of Millersville, Maryland. Driving today, we've got Frank Blatt from Annapolis, Maryland, and navigating is Alan Barham from West River, Maryland. The Network Express race team, and they are locked in a battle with Lady L, as you saw. It's neck and neck for first place in offshore B-Class right now. There you see the distance between your first and second place boat. That's approximately two boat lengths maximum. Not even, it's being close to one boat length, and Meyer is pulling even to Network Express. This is great racing here. APBA in Sarasota really putting on a show today. Art Lilly on the outside, Pete Meyer coming up on the inside. They're even, and Peter Meyer of Lady L is starting to take a slight lead. He's got half a boat length right now on Network Express. So he is making up some ground. But Network Express, not to be denied, is hanging even right now. Super racing in offshore B. What can we say? It speaks for itself. B-22, Lady L. It's a 28-foot signature powered by two 400-horsepower Mercury inboard motors with Merc Cruiser Drive. This boat is owned and throttled by Peter Meyer of Port Washington, New York. Driving today is Anthony LeCaro from Point Washington, New York. And navigating from Port Washington is Joe Bonifazio. Lady L starting to extend to a one boat length lead now over Network Express. Lady L having a very strong run as they're holding off the hard charging Network Express. But Art Lilly is not to be denied. Already this year, he took a first place in Panama City. And he would certainly like to build on that first place victory here today. And he knows he's locked in a battle with Pete Myers, Lady L. Art Lilly's Network Express race team. He also took a first place in Newburyport this year. So Lilly knows what it takes to get to that checkered flag. And he's going all out here today in Sarasota. It's going to go right down to the wire, we're sure, between Pete Meyer's Lady L and Art Lilly's Network Express. There you see the distance between these two boats. Meyer is starting to extend a lead a little greater in length over Lilly's Network Express. Pete Meyer of Lady L would like to thank some men, people who have done a great job in making Lady L the successful race team that it is. Peter D'Alessandro of Michigan for the motors. Vico Engines of Babylon. Armasol Products. Tom's Point Marina and Manhasset Bay Marina. 
the crew of Tom Lampus, Guy LaMotta Jr., Guy LaMotta Sr., and Shore Refrigeration has done a great job in helping out. Lady Elves, the 1989 World Champion, the 1989 Southeast Champion, and the 1989 Gold Coke Champion. So 89 had been very good to Lady L, and they would certainly like to get the same type of results here in 1991. The Lady L race team, headed up by Peter Meyer. There you see the crew of Lady L navigating and getting right on course. They're comfortable with where they're going right now, and they're going to go all day right to the checkered flag with Network Express. From Sarasota, Florida, it's Peter Meyer's Lady L race team. Peter Meyer is looking forward to seeing everyone August 10th at the Montauk Yacht Club, and he'd like to thank them also for the host that they're going to be for this race in the ATBA heads up to the Northeast. They're running at a very strong clip right now. If they continue at this pace, they could conceivably set a new course record here today at Sarasota. So I'll have to wait and see how things unfold. But right now, Peter Meyer and the rest of the Lady L crew is on a blistering pace. ADL is setting a blistering pace. Art Lilly and Network Express is hanging right there. They're both running in speeds of excess of 80 miles per hour, and these are two hard-charging teams, and they know what it takes to get to the end. But right now, they're going all out, and there's no tomorrow. These boats are at full throttle and charging hard. Art Lilly in a fierce battle with Pete Meyer's Lady L going head-to-head -head Network Express. Now we come up on S3, the Courageous Cat race team. This is a 27-foot Cougar racing hull powered by two 200-horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned and driven by Scott Greer of Sarasota, Florida, and Ted Greer from Sarasota is your throttle man. The Greer is making up the Courageous Cat race team. Courageous Cat took a first place in Panama City this year, and they'd love to compound on that one here today in Sarasota.
They're locked in a battle right now with Liliana and Thin Ice, who you've also seen. Sundance Skater Patriot all going at it. It's still too close to call, but the Greers are really starting to make a move on the rest of the pack in S-Class. The Courageous Cat Race Team. Now we come up on B85, the Jaws race team. This is a 29-foot Phantom powered by two 240 horsepower Mercury outboard motors. This boat is owned by LPD Advertising from East Hanover, New Jersey. Driving today is Paul Smisinski from East Hanover, New Jersey. And from Hackettstown, New Jersey, it's David Horseman on the throttles. The Jaws race team, and they are in the jaws of a fierce battle right now. Lady L Network Express, you already saw. Hot ticket. Jaws is right there, locked in it. Team Scarab, Aquatron, Running Wild, all there. Too intense. Some big boats out here in Offshore B. Too close to call. Lady Ellen Network Express still running 1 2 in a fierce battle. And Hot Ticket and Jaws are fighting for the third place spot in Offshore B. So they're having a fine run, and they certainly want to continue as such because we're starting to draw to some of the closing stages here in the race. And the Jaws race team is going all out right now to try to get a top three finish in Offshore B. We wish them all the best here in Sarasota, Florida. The Jaws race team.
Now we come up on another offshore B boat. It's B79, Team Scarab. There's a 31 foot Scarab powered by two 500 horsepower innovation inboard motors with Merc Cruiser outdrives. This boat is owned and throttled by Jim Gregg of Sarasota, Florida. Driving today is Chris Nichols from Sarasota, and navigating is Alan Binnenwick from Anna Marie, Florida. Team Scarab. They're also in the thick of it. They're trailing Hot Ticket and Jaws, but they are holding off Aquatron and Running Wild and Two Intense in the Offshore B. Offshore B has certainly provided some good racing. From Sarasota, Florida, it's B79, Team Scarab, headed up by Jim Gregg. Good overhead shot of the Team Scarab race team. Now we come up on an A boat, A41, Mr. Zip, and he is zipping around the course right now. There's a 28 foot arrow powered by two 400 horsepower H&E inboard motors with Merc Cruiser drives. This boat is owned by J. Wayne Walker of Papahannock, Virginia. Driving today is Jeff Curry from Manikin, Virginia, and on throttle it's J. Wayne Walker from Papahannock, Virginia. Mr. Zip, what a race he's having right now and what a year he's been having for that matter. Mr. Zip, already this year he took a first place in St. Cloud and a first place in Panama City. Presently he is running in first place, holding off airtime, Team Gulf Wind, Tunnel Vision, Red Thunder, at the present time in A. The race is starting to draw to some cl the close right now. Mr. Zip has just several miles left between himself and the checkered flag. So Jeff Curry and J. Wayne Walker are really doing the job here in Mr. Zip. Well, the way things are going right now, he could add to his string of first places already in 1991. And he could really start building up a commanding lead in points in the Southeast Divisional Offshore Standings. From Sarasota, Florida, it's Mr. Zip Race Team. There you see him, very strong right there. With that clenched fist of confidence, Mr. Zip is on its way, presently running in first place unofficially in offshore A, and if things remain like they are, they will take the checkered flag here today in Sarasota, but we will have to wait and see. Jay Wayne Walker and Jeff Curry's Mr. Zip. Now we come up on S84, Fortune and Glory. There's a 26-foot thoroughbred racing boat powered by two 200 horsepower OMC outboard motors. This boat is owned and throttled by Brett Archer of Sarasota, Florida, and Paul Kesserling is your driver also from Sarasota, Florida. There you've got it, the Fortune and Glory race team, a very pretty looking boat right there.
Fortune and Glory is fighting with Courageous Cat, Liliana, and Violator for some of the last spots in stock class. Overall, they had a relatively good run, and they're just trying to close the gap between themselves and the leader here today as the race is starting to draw to a close in Sarasota, Florida. Brett Archer and Paul Kesserling in Fortune and Glory race team. Now we come up on A63, the Red Thunder Race Team. There's a 20-foot, 22-foot Chris Craft, fired by a single 550 horsepower Mercury inboard motor with Merc Cruiser Outdrive. This boat is owned and throttled by Ron Falsters from Panama City, Florida. Navigating today is John R. Johnson of Lynn Haven, Florida. And driving today from Lynn Haven, Florida, it's Jay Kirkpatrick, the Red Thunder Race Team. They're fighting with tunnel vision, hijinks, Sia and Team Gulfland right now in Offshore A. They've got to close the gap between themselves and Mr. Zip because Mr. Zip, who you saw earlier on, was on fire. But right now, these guys are running for the third, fourth, fifth place spots and points here, and they're looking very good right now in the Red Thunder race team. Baltzers, Kirkpatrick, and Johnson making up the Red Thunder race team. In 1991, Red Thunder took a ninth place in Panama City. So they are having a better finish here today. And with a fourth or fifth place finish here today, that can move them up to the middle of the pack in points because Offshore A is so tightly contested at this point in time. And he certainly would like to come back and have a stronger finish in the next race. So he can build on this and we wish them all the best. From Sarasota, Florida, it's the Red Thunder race team. Now we come up on A33, the SIA race team. This is a 24-foot V-bottom racing hull powered by a single Johnson outboard motor. This boat is owned by John Kirsten of Silver Springs, Maryland, who is your driver, and James Spiros from Silver Springs, Maryland, is your throttle man. John Kirsten owns a BMW shop in Silver Springs, Maryland, while James Spiros owns Ocean Motion Limited, which is a boat rigging shop in the Chesapeake Bay area. So Spiros and Kristen making up the Sea Race team. Sea Race team, right now in the middle of the pack in Offshore A. And just trying to close the gap between himself and finish as high as he can in the points. The Sea Race team. We're in the final legs of today's race. Some boats have already finished, many boats have broken. 
and in just moments we'll be compiling the results and shortly we'll be bringing you the final results of the 1991 Suncoast Offshore Grand Prix from Sarasota, Florida. But right now we're going to stay with SEA Race Team. Right now we're back with Executioner. They're running first place overall and heading for the checkered flag. Alan Fuentes had a great run today. Unfortunately, Reggie Fountain, the Fountain Race Team, has broken down. Hydra Bandit has broken down. And there you see the Executioner with a clenched fist. What a great day of racing for Alan Fuentes, Mark Hawkins, and Jack Haney of the Executioner Race Team. Number one, thumbs up. Your overall winner here today in the 1991 Suncoast Offshore Grand Prix from Sarasota, Florida. Stay tuned. We're going to be bringing you the final results of all classes here today in Sarasota. But there's the victorious thumbs up from Alan Fuentes and the rest of the crew of the Executioner Race Team. We're going to take it home with them in Sarasota, Florida. And in just moments, we'll be bringing you the final results of the 1991 Suncoast Offshore Grand Prix. Alan Fuentes is really bringing Executioner home hard. He's doing speeds close to 90 miles per hour, and they had a great day of racing here today. In just a few moments, we're going to compile all the results for the 1991 Suncoast Offshore Grand Prix. But before that, Jeff Girardi had a chance to be in the pits after the race to meet with some of the winners and the other contestants of today's race for a few upfront and candid interviews. We're at the 1991 Sarasota Offshore Grand Prix with Basil and Reggie Fountain. Reggie, how do you feel the boat handled today? Well, the boat was doing great here in the first uh, couple of laps. Uh, Basil was doing a great job running it out there with me, and uh, we had a nice lead, and we throttled way back just trying to stay out there in front and maintain our lead. And we blew a water strainer system apart uh, that strains the water coming in the back of the boat, and that wet my engines down. But until that, those Merc cruisers are running beautiful. The fountain boat was working good, and Basil was doing one heck of a job driving the boat. What'd you think about it, Basil? Well, <clears throat> I've never been in a boat that big and that quick. 
and so well put together by Fountain and Mercruiser. We come out yesterday, we tried the boat, she did real well, got the bugs out of her, went out this morning, she was running absolutely fine. We got off on the start, we had a good start. All the gauges, the motors were running fine, everything sounded good. Getting into the second lap, like Reggie just explained, we had a little bit of a problem and it cut down on the motor. And we thought, well, it's better than save the motors and kill them and get out there and do something nasty to them. So we came back and I tell you, it was a thrill to be riding with Reggie. It's an experience. It's given me a definite idea already to put my order down for a couple of fountain boats, of which a couple I should leave here in America and take one or two back home for racing. And this is a team of uh, Copa and Reggie Fountain that you're going to see more often. We want to tie in the relationship between us, the Kuwaitis, COPA, which is the Kuwait Offshore Powerboat Association, and the APBA. And I've got the right people, and I thank them all. Mr. Reggie Fountain, Mr. John Antonelli, people that got me involved. And this is not the first, and it won't be the last race I'll be racing in the States. So I look really forward to it. Thank you very much. Here we are with the 1991 Sarasota Offshore Grand Prix winner in Superboat class. Vince, how do you think the boat ran today? The boat ran extremely well. Joey took it off the line real quick. We caught some good breaks out there. That's why we're here talking to you, but it's a great feeling to win a Superboat race, especially that we've been bumped up out of a divisional class, which we ran last year, which we did very well. And I'm very glad to have Joey with me. I think that's why this boat is running the way it is now. It's really flying, thanks to Kurt's motors also, this new power in here. Joe, how do you feel the boat was? Well, the boat ran well. It's uh, my first time in a Hydrotech, and um, I'm coming off of my boat. It's a little bigger. But it's, uh, there's some lottery in the way it runs. It's a good running boat. 1991 Sarasota Offshore Grand Prix. Here we are, your winner in D-Class Aero Express. Phil, how do you think the boat handled all the way, coming all the way from the Empire State? boat handled great, Jeff. It was really fantastic. I got two guys out of Lindenhurst. My camera, John Buscema. They're natives of Flo they're Flor Floridians now, if you want to call it that. They did a great job. Without them, the boat never could have.